Increase our faith, Lord. I expect that most of us here at one time or another have said or at least thought something like that. It's a common experience, I believe, for even the most dedicated Christian to experience those moments when things seem bleak, when we question the teachings of our church. At other times, we wonder if, just maybe, all those doubters and skeptics may have a point. After all, wouldn't it be easier to navigate this world if we just had our faith supply filled up like our gas tanks? After all, it's a mark of strength, of faith, to want to grow spiritually. Today's Gospel reading relates something like that. Jesus' disciples made what would seem like a logical, obvious request. They said, increase our faith. If we were hearing this the first time, as Jesus was, how would we expect Jesus to respond? By giving them pointers so they could have more faith, perhaps? By helping them understand God better so their faith could become deeper? By assuring them of God's love so they would have fewer doubts? Jesus starts by saying that the disciples have chosen a fitting topic. He described the power of faith as being so strong that even the tiniest bit of it would provide a force that, well, for example, could successfully order a tree to lift up off its roots and be planted in the sea. Then, Jesus immediately puts a twist on the disciples' request by taking the discussion to an unexpected place. He surprises us by teaching an unusual lesson. Jesus startles his followers by saying that the task of discipleship doesn't require very much faith at all. What Jesus insisted is that all we need is to obey God and do our duty. As examples, he depicts his disciples as humble servants, slaves who tend sheep and plow fields. The effect of Jesus' teaching is that a true disciple needs only enough faith to serve and to care for God's people with the attentiveness of a slave. Furthermore, Jesus reminds his disciples not only of their duty to be hardworking servants, but to be servants who don't expect to be thanked. This, he says, constitutes what faith is. Surely, surely, a call for an unrecognized, unthanked form of faith is not something many of us want to hear. Yet it's the truth of Jesus' gospel for us today. Faith, he tells us, is mostly a matter of duty within relationship. Faith, he tells us, is not something we can do alone. Faith, he tells us, is lived out in interactions between two or more people. The servant serves a master. Without a master, there is no servant. Without a servant, there is no master. Without our duty to serve others, we have no faith. Without this God-given obligation to one another, we revert to our selfish little worlds. Without this God-given obligation, our faith becomes self-serving, a security blanket or a ticket to a life of self-gratification. Some years ago, there was a book published drawing from the various letters and journal entries written by Mother Teresa, in which she expressed her estrangement from the sense of God's presence in her life. What struck me about this was the feeling of longing she expressed and the sense of always wanting to have that feeling of the direct presence of God. In a sense, her cry was that of the apostles in today's gospel. The other thing that struck me was that for all of the pain reflected in her writing, she nevertheless continued in her ministry, day after day, in the depths of India's poverty, to bring relief to the poor and the hopeless. Her struggle might almost be a living example of today's gospel. When you've done all that you were ordered to do, say, we are worthless slaves, 
we have done only what we ought to have done. And yet this woman who was going through her own passage of a sense of estrangement found the time to bring the light of the gospel to others. Henry Nowen, the spiritual writer, recounts a conversation with Mother Teresa that lasted just a few moments. Here are his words. Once, quite a few years ago, I had the opportunity of meeting Mother Teresa of Calcutta. I was struggling with many things at the time and decided to use the occasion to ask Mother Teresa's advice. As soon as we sat down, I started explaining all of my problems and difficulties, trying to convince her of how complicated it all was. When, after 10 minutes of elaborate explanation, I finally became silent, Mother Teresa looked at me quietly and said, Well, when you spend one hour a day adoring your Lord and never do anything you know is wrong, you will be fine. When she said this, I realized suddenly that she had punctured my big balloon of complex self-complaints and pointed me far beyond myself to the place of real healing. All of us, all of us, living out our baptismal promises are always learning how to grow in Christ. We experience over and over again the power of God in our lives as we experience that power by understanding more about faith as obedience to God. We gain that power and an increase in faith as we follow the great commandment to love God with all we are and to love others as we love ourselves. This might not make a good evangelism message for some. It might seem too demanding to hear that being a part of the body of Christ is so much about giving and doing so without expecting to be thanked. Is that our message of evangelism? Is that how we grow into the full stature of Christ? Well, yes it is, according to Jesus. As we grow in Christ, we will learn not to expect to be thanked, but to give ourselves away for others, doing acts of faith and obeying God. In learning what our duty to God and our neighbor truly is, that's how we will increase our faith.